how Newcastle can become the next Man City with an Arab billionaire takeover. Before the video starts, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the content coming over the summer and like and share the video if you enjoy it. I've also put a quiz question in the comment section below so go down there and see if you can get the answer right. In the last week or so, there have been a lot of rumours circulating that Newcastle is set to be bought for £350 million by a relative of the UAE royal family who are the owners of Manchester City. Excitement has sprung up as people are starting to question whether the Premier League could be set to see another Chelsea or Manchester City type story appear in front of us over the next few seasons. But if Newcastle do indeed get such a wealth of financial resources, how should they approach spending the money and getting back to the top of the Premier League where they have been absent from for so long? Newcastle should start off by outlining the structure of how they wish to work in the coming seasons. They should appoint a director of football who has experience in rebuilding an entire squad to challenge at the top of a league. The man for this has to be Luis Campos, the current Lille Sporting Director and former Monaco Technical Director. Campos was responsible for building the 2016-17 Monaco side that beat PSG to the league on title and got to the Champions League semi-final. Campos brought in talented young players like Timo Bakayoko, Bernardo Silva, Anthony Martial, Fabinho and Benjamin Mendy for minimal fees. He assembled a squad of players under 23 years old who hadn't yet broken onto the European football scene but also accompanied them with savvy more experienced signings such as the likes of Dimitar Berbatov, Kamil Glick and Ricardo Carvalho for peanuts in relative terms to the astronomical fees that were being bandied about at the time. He replicated this success with Lille, bringing in players like Nicolas Pepe for around 2.5 million, Thiago Mendes for around 7 million, who have now burst onto the European stage and are now being touted about for big money moves to this transfer window. Campos integrated these young talents with experience, as seen with Jose Font being brought back from China to secure Lille's defence and project them to a second place finish in Ligue 1. If Campos was brought in, he'd be able to use his experience from France to assemble a side that would give Newcastle the long-term potential to compete for the Premier League. At Monaco and Lille, Campos had a lower budget than he would at Newcastle, and if he were to make similar purchases in the Premier League, he wouldn't see them leave the club in a season or two, as happened at both Monaco and Lille. If it is deemed that Rafa Benitez cannot work with a director of football like Campos, then no matter how well he has done with limited resources over the past few seasons, he has to be replaced with someone who can implement the club's vision. I do think Benitez would be willing to work with someone like Campos, so should be given a chance with a bigger budget. In terms of player recruitment, Newcastle first need to work out which players have a future at the club over the coming season, the next two to three seasons, and beyond that into a title challenging season. For me, the players with potential to be at least important squad players during a title challenging season would be Lascelles, DeAndre Yedlin, Sean Longstaff and Jose Perez. Obviously, the other players aren't just going to be discarded with, as Newcastle can't bring in a whole new squad in one transfer window, but this should be kept in mind when it comes to renewal of contracts later down the line. Newcastle should be targeting players who are 26 and younger. This is because Newcastle, no matter what their resources, will not be competing for the Premier League within the next two seasons. It took Man City three seasons from 2008 when they were taken over before they were even competing for the league. This means that there is no point spending £60 million on a 29-year-old striker as if Newcastle were looking to build a side to challenge in the next three to four seasons, they would need to replace these sort of players. So we'd be better off going for a younger player who hasn't yet hit his peak so that when he does, the other players assembled around him are also capable of leading the title challenge. Newcastle should probably be looking to get in around seven to eight first team players this summer if the takeover is complete before July as they should have a budget of around 150 to 200 million pounds. As a centre-back partner to the sales, Ibrahima Kanate, the 20-year-old RB Leipzig player, who'd cost around £35 million, should be pursued. He's good enough for a top-six club with his pace, tackling ability and reading of the game, making him one of the best young centre-backs out there and would be a mainstay in the Newcastle side for the next 10 seasons. Use of Kone at Lille would be a good option at left-back. He's only 23 years old and would only cost around £10 million, but would easily be a solid player for Newcastle in the coming seasons, having impressed with his tackling ability, crossing and energy down Lille's left-hand side. Danny Sabayas should also be targeted this summer. Zidane has reportedly made it clear that Sabayas has no place in his plans next season, which should allow Newcastle to bring in the 22-year-old for around £35 million this summer. Wilfred Ndidi from Leicester would be a good option to partner Sabayas in Benitez's double pivot. Ndidi, like Sabayas, is 23 years old and would be a marquee signing at around £45 million. Hakim Ziyech and Tammy Abraham should also be considered as they both cost around a £25 million mark. Ziyech has been one of the best players in Europe this season and if the other top clubs pass up on him, Newcastle should bring the 26-year-old to St James's Park by triggering his £25 million release clause and making him their standout creative player in their side. Abraham, at 21 years old, can still develop into a world-class player with his ability being shown at Aston Villa this season and being a homegrown player, signing him for around the £25 million mark could be great business as he should develop into a top-class Premier League striker in the next few seasons. 
Obviously, these are just some players I've thrown forward for Newcastle to potentially sign this summer, but Campos would look to bring in his own favourites, and with his track record and financial power behind him, he would be the single most important piece in Newcastle's jigsaw. Whether this takeover happens or not is still to be seen, but if it does, the structure behind the financial power will be crucial if Newcastle wants to replicate the previous successes of Manchester City and Chelsea. Thanks for watching, remember to like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this.